Readings from Baha'u'llah for comfort and confidence. Number four. Reading number one. Supplications number one. He is the all-glorious. Recite this supplication every morn and eve. Glory be unto thee, O Lord my God. I beseech thee by thy most great name, by which the day star of thy cause hath shone forth from the horizon of thy revelation, to withhold us not from the breezes wafting from the region of thy loving kindness. Fix our attention then, O my God, solely on thy face, and sever us from all else except thee. Number us among those whom the suggestions of men have failed to prevent from turning toward the scene of thy divine unity. Shelter us, O Lord, beneath the shade of thy supreme mercy. Preserve us from those who have denied thine all-glorious name. And give us to drink from the pure wine of thy providential love and the nectar of thy grace and bounty. Potent art thou to do as thou willest. Thou art the forgiving, the all-merciful. O Lord, make us steadfast in thy love amidst thy creatures, for this is the greatest of the gifts thou hast bestowed unto thy people. Thou, of all who show mercy, art the most merciful. Reading number two, the law of love. Say, O friend, sleep with your face turned to the friend and rest in bed in the thought of the loved one. From flowers, inhale the fragrance of the beloved one. And in every fire, see the light of the desired one. I swear by the life of the friend that if thou smellest the garment of Joseph and enterest the Egypt of the love of God, thou wilt become the mother of all chosen ones. Then exert thyself in love with thy soul and enter the abode of the Beloved One with thy heart. Abandon grief for the world to its people, and give no heed to the limited days of this world. Be seated on the immortal, everlasting throne. Be clad in a divine raiment. Drink the wine of love from the cup of the Beloved One. Become ablaze with the light of love, and so the robe of love. This is that matter which shall never change. Know thou therefore, that in every age and dispensation, all divine ordinances are changed and transformed according to the requirements of the time, except the law of love, which, like unto a fountain, flows always and is never overtaken by change. This is of the wonderful mysteries which God has mentioned for his servants. Verily, he is the merciful, the compassionate. Reading number three, 
No truthful one is excluded from God's bounties. Is there any truthful seeker who is excluded from the bounties of the generous? Or any advancerer who desires with perfect righteousness the extreme place and was barred from it? No, by the self of God. If some of the Unitarians, the near ones and the sincere, do not succeed apparently to what they desire, this is owing to the mystery of the highest wisdom of God. So they must not be saddened, because for everything there is a special fixed time, and when that arrives, it appears in truth from the presence of God, the Lord of the worlds. Be rejoiced, O saints of God and his friends, that my supreme pen mentioned you in the night in which the tongue of greatness declared, Verily, there is no God but he, the assister, the single, the generous, the praiseworthy, Reading number four. Would that there were holy doves who would soar. Would that there were holy doves and unsullied hearts that might soar with the servant in the atmosphere of this knowledge. An expanse in which the wings of all who venture to draw nigh are burned away to nothingness. God shall make manifest on earth servants unaffected by the interdictions of the malicious, who shall take flight on the wings of holiness, who shall traverse the realms of eternity, who shall enter the tabernacle of effulgent glory, and who shall neither be engrossed by any earthly condition, nor diverted by the vanities of the world from the remembrance of God, the Most High, the Omnipotent, the All-Glorious. Whenever they hear the melodies of the Spirit, their eyes will overflow with tears. They will rejoice at the good favour of God and turn toward the beauty of a sublime sanctity. They shall never exchange the verses of God for anything whatsoever, though they be tempted with all that is in the heavens and on earth. Whensoever they hearken unto the melodies of God, they will incline themselves unto the homeland of his presence and sacrifice their lives at every moment. Reading number five. Baha'u'llah's speech is sweeter than all else. Say, people, do you dispute the spirit, Baha'u'llah, concerning what he witnessed and saw, and the melodies of God that he heard in the most holy, pure and glorious realm? In truth, he is so steadfast that the entire creation will never deter him, nor will all who are in the heavens and on earth ever be more in his eyes than a handful of dust. Were he but to speak forth the least intimation, it would be sweeter than all that has been revealed in the kingdom of the cause and the world of creation. This is known only 
by those who possess understanding. In truth, he has mounted the throne and seated himself thereon. In truth, a glance at him is better than all that is in the concourse on high, and better than the kingdoms of this world and the next. Blessed is the one who has attained the presence of the throne, has gazed on the countenance of the Most High, and has heard in the songs of holiness the most great verses of his Lord. Reading number six. The sun has risen over the sacred horizon. The sun has risen over the sacred horizon and the concourse on high has been illumined by its radiance. The scent of musk has diffused from the knolls of sanctity, perfuming the temples of pre-existence. Happy is he who adorns himself with these fragrances. The luminary of the cause has arisen in the midst of the sky and has taken the form of a full moon, brilliant in its whiteness. Concourse of the Near Ones, seek to be illumined by its splendour. Say, the throne has been established behind the pavilion of majesty, and about it circle chaste maidens of beauty, bearing flagons brimming with the water of life. Blessed is the person who attains to sprinkle droplets thereof. Say, the maiden of eternity has uncovered beauty itself with a gut-wrenching gaze. Blessed is the one who is struck by her glance. Say, the voice of God has been heard from the sanctuary of eternity, and the hearts of the mystic knowers have been enthralled by its melodies. Reading number seven. This is a day that shall never be followed by night. Give ear on that day when the crier shall call forth from the midmost heart of eternity. And the dove of the Hejaz shall warble from Iraq and summon all to enter his presence. On that day, the gates of paradise shall be opened unto all creation. This is a day that shall never be followed by night, a day by which the sun itself seeketh to be illumined. For it is a day that hath been irradiated by the glory of the divine countenance. By God, on that day, a carpet of sublime sanctity shall be unrolled before the presence of the Lord, the Almighty, the Transcendent. By God, on that day, none shall bear the throne of God save his very self, who is the Absolute. To this do we verily testify. On that day, stations shall be disclosed that transcend the very mention of unity and that elude the very realities of singleness. The most sublime thoughts of those endowed with heavenly knowledge shall fail to soar 
into the sphere of that day, accepting those whom thy Lord hath willed to exempt. Blessed then is he whose eyes shall be solaced on that day by the sight of God himself, the sovereign Lord of all, the exalted, the almighty. Reading number eight, supplications number 35. Praise be unto thee, O Lord, for having given me to drink of the wine of thy loving kindness, and the fount of thy tender mercies, and for having enabled me to turn toward the holy sanctuary that hath ever been the spot around which thy prophets and chosen ones have circumambulated. Aid me in my service unto thee, O Lord, in such wise that I shall be unperturbed by the rejection of any who dwell on earth, and shall be able to so proclaim thee that those asleep in the slumber of self and desire will awaken and set their faces unto thy most exalted and all glorious name. Poor and destitute, O Lord, I long to stand before the throne of thy wealth. Sore athirst, I hasten to the abode from which the river that is life indeed floweth by thy leave, and through the sovereign power of thy might. Ailing, I yearn for the ocean of thy healing. Lowly, I set my hopes on the day spring of thy glory. Forbid me not the bounties thou dost possess. Rather, aid and assist me, O my God, that I may spread abroad the mention of thy name and make known the sublimity of thy word amidst all thy creation and amongst all of thy servants. I am certain, O my God, that thou shalt answer my prayer and grant all that I have sought of the marvels of thy grace and the heaven of thy munificence and thy beneficence. None other God is there beside thee, the all-knowing, the all-wise. 